Nanakorobi yaoki. Fall down seven times, stand up eight. This proverb gives great insight into the indomitable spirit of the Japanese people. They have long revered those who, faced with certain defeat, never give up. Japanese history is filled with the tragic stories of those who are doomed to fail. This week on Lost in Translation, we explore Dark Souls and its unique connection to Japan's admiration of failure. On its surface, the Dark Souls games appear to carry few hallmarks of Japanese game development. I mean, the presentation in the Dark Souls franchise is overtly Western. Most of the armor and locations evoke Western imagery. Even the Japanese version of the game contains English voice acting, with Japanese subtitles. However, on closer inspection, the themes at the heart of the Souls series couldn't be more Japanese. From Software consistently banks on the satisfaction that comes from overcoming the seemingly impossible in a world devoid of hope. The player encounters fail states more frequently than most other games. In fact, the average deaths per playthrough for Dark Souls 2 is reported to be over 800. So what makes such a brutal game quintessentially Japanese? You could say that the games are about failure. To illustrate this, we need to go back in time nearly a thousand years to be precise, to the time of the Genpei War and the story of Minamoto no Yoshitsune. Born in 1159, Yoshitsune spent his childhood in exile from the dominant Taira clan. They had killed his father and captured his mother. Sent to a remote Buddhist temple, Yoshitsune developed into a legendary swordsman and tactician. Tales of his accomplishments are greatly exaggerated today but there remains no question of his role in history. In 1180, Yoshitsune learned that his brother, Yoritomo, had raised an army in response to the prince's call for aid. At the age of 21, Yoshitsune set out from his home in northern Japan to aid his brother in his campaign against the Taira clan. Yoshitsune proved to be a remarkably gifted and loyal general. Following the warrior monk Benkei, he overtook a tide of fortification by leading a cavalry charge down the steep mountainside. It was an approach the Taira and Yoshitsune's men had considered to be impossible. Victorious, the Minamoto drove the Taira to the sea. Led by Yoshitsune, the Minamoto army relentlessly pursued the Taira over the next year. The two sides ultimately faced off in a fierce naval battle in which the child emperor of Japan and his mother drowned in the ocean taking two of the three sacred imperial objects with them, the imperial sword and jewel. Yoshitsune led the victory, which relinquished Taira control over Japan. Yoshitsune's brother, Yoritomo, now had a clear path to become the first shogun in Japanese history. Yet somewhere along the way, Yoritomo had become suspect of his brother's motives. In particular, he had resisted awarding Yoshitsune honorary titles for his great victories, as was custom at the time. In a move that many historians consider suspect, the retired emperor, Go Shirakawa, awarded those titles to Yoshitsune anyways, including the rank of Hogan, or lieutenant. Yoritomo was furious. He ordered the Minamoto forces to hunt down and execute Yoshitsune. After years spent in hiding, Yoritomo's men finally tracked down his beleaguered brother. The loyal monk Benkei fended off the attackers long enough for Yoshitsune to commit ritual suicide, along with his wife and daughter, giving him an honorable death. At the age of 31, Yoshitsune's life ended at the feet of his former allies. Yoritomo believed that his legacy was all but certain, and the story of Yoshitsune would fade into obscurity. That, however, did not happen. Over the course of Yoshitsune's life, his fearlessness and brilliance had endeared him to the Japanese public. His tragic life and the betrayal of his brother only further solidified their respect for him. People started to identify with the phrase Hogan Biki, literally favoring the lieutenant, referring to Yoshitsune's rank of Hogan bestowed upon him by the scheming emperor. The phrase Hogan Biki still resonates with the Japanese people today. 
Its meaning can be identified as the nobility of failure, the ethos of admiring those who fail. It glorifies those who are defeated fighting for a lost cause. Japan's history is full of heroes that embody Hogan Biki. The 47 Ronin and Saigo Takamori are two excellent examples of this. The Japanese have even gone so far as to build shrines honoring the failure of certain individuals, most notably being the Minatogawa Jinja in Kobe. The shrine's god is the spirit of Kusunoki Masashige, a warrior who was willing to follow his emperor's orders in battle, even though he knew that doing so would result in certain death. The aesthetics of failure, finding honor and beauty in the flawed and incomplete, is closely tied to another Japanese concept, wabi-sabi. As the Japanese worldview centered on the acceptance of transience and imperfection, wabi-sabi is derived from the three Buddhist marks of existence. Nothing lasts, nothing is finished, and nothing is perfect. The cherry blossom and the tea bowl embody this aesthetic perfectly. And so, I would argue, does Dark Souls. Finding nobility in failing, persisting in the face of seemingly impossible odds, a weathering world full of suffering and questions of identity, the three marks of existence in Buddhism. In fact, From Software may have been zeroing in on this theme as early as 2005, when they released a game in Japan that never made it to the West. The name? Yoshitsune Eiyuden. The story of hero Yoshitsune. I'll see you again next time.